Well, what's up, everybody? What's up? Welcome to another Victory Ooh. Group. And let us just say, we're so proud of you. Yes, So are. proud that you're committed to being group, man. We are excited. You're going to be in group all year long. Yes. And we're going to build relationship mm -hmm. together in this year of kingdom alignment. Yes. I'm excited. Are you excited? I'm so excited. Are you excited? I know you is. I'm excited I know you... to build the kingdom. Come on. And to align the kingdom. Come the kingdom. on. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we're in a brand new teaching with a brand new year with a brand new theme Amen. and the theme for 2024 is what kingdom alignment kingdom alignment and we've been learning yes. what that kingdom alignment means mm -hmm. and so let's review our definition you have our definition handy what's yes. kingdom alignment mean we said the kingdom alignment means i'm functioning based on the mandates of god to fulfill the call of God on my life. Yes. That's causing me to experience the goodness of God. Kingdom alignment is all about fulfilling a purpose, man. Mm -hmm. It's you are fulfilling the purpose of God based upon the word of God. Mm -hmm. And when you, we've been saying, when you're walking in your purpose of pursuing yeah. it, the goodness of God is waiting on yeah. you. Now, one of the things that we covered just recently, and this whole kingdom alignment is if you're mm -hmm. going to align yourself with the kingdom and fulfill purpose and mm -hmm. experience God's best for your life, it's going to take courage. Yes, it is. It's going to take courage. You know, kingdom alignment mm -hmm. is not for the faint of heart. It's going to take courage. And so mm -hmm. what's courage? In case somebody says, well, what what's courage mean? What is courage? What is courage? We said that courage has the established will to mm -hmm. act boldly and daringly to overcome the uncertainty of the present, overcome the pain and disappointment of the past. Yes. And to pursue the future depending on God. That sounds like Church of God in Christ reading. If you know about oh, Church of God gosh. in Christ read. <laughs> and so, but yeah, it's courage. Courage <laughs> causes me to not quit. Yes. Courage causes me in the face of demonic adversary mm -hmm. to keep going. Yeah. If I fall, to get up, man, and keep y going. Yeah, because I think when you're talking about kingdom alignment and when you're talking about fulfilling the call of God yeah. on your life and how that brings fulfillment in your life, you got to recognize that the enemy doesn't want you to do that. Yes. So anytime you're starting to operate in what God has called you to do, you have to expect the enemy to try to come 100%. in to stop you from doing yes. what God has called you to do. So you're going to need courage yes. to be able to overcome and do what you know to do regardless of how you feel yes, yes. so that you don't back down to what the enemy's trying to right. stop you from right. so that you can then pursue the call of God on your life and truly be fulfilled because you're aligning to the kingdom. Yeah, of yeah. Now, one of the things just recently we began to look at is, mm -hmm. you know, if we're going to align ourselves mm -hmm. with the kingdom of God, because that might say, I'm, I'm ready to align myself. Mm -hmm. We got to make sure we're operating in the kingdom. Oh, yeah. You know, you can't align Pretty yourself nice. with the kingdom if you're not operating in, in the, the kingdom. kingdom. And we found out just recently, one of the last lessons, that Jesus shows up mm -hmm. and Jesus shows up on the scene First time in public mm -hmm. ministry, and he tells them basically, you got to change your thinking about the kingdom. Yes. You got to change your thinking because you cannot handle the kingdom of God democratically. Yes. You can, and, and because of our, you know, our democratic society, we think we handle the kingdom of God democratically, that my vote and, and you know, how I feel counts. Amen. But you can't, the kingdom of God is not democratic, it's monarchy. Amen. It's based upon a king that's ruling, a king mm -hmm. that's leading. And so a lot of people struggle with kingdom because they think, you know, well, you know, you know God is concerned about how I feel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, bringing the, the Bible down to fit my, you know, my, you know, uh, convenience, but it's not. It's led by a king mm -hmm. who has his his law, and his law is law. His word is law, mm -hmm. and so you know, it's it's understanding that if I'm going to operate in the kingdom, you got to change your thinking. Yes. You gotta you gotta go from thinking it's about you. Mm -hmm. You always say it's what? It's not about you. It's not about you. It's about the king and his yes, kingdom. kingdom. And what we found out is the greatest th threat to the kingdom of God is the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm the kingdom of darkness, that there's a very real devil who is out there trying to dismantle and disrupt the kingdom of God. Yes. And we found this out, and if you missed it, you need to go back and look at it, is his greatest attack against the citizens of the kingdom is attacking what they know. Yes. Attacking the knowledge that they know. The enemy's goal is to get us to doubt mm -hmm. the knowledge that we know. And to question it. You figure if he did it with Adam and Eve yes. in the garden. Yes. 
why wouldn't he do it with you? Yes. Because if he can get you to doubt, if he can get you to question, then you won't step out with courage and do what God has called you to do then to fulfill the call of God. You know, the Bible says no temptation has overtaken us, mm -hmm. but such as is common, common to, to man. And so Satan is a creature of habit. And so you can see it as you just mentioned, which is but so great. But we don't great. recognize it at we the time. Don't. We don't. Re we don't think that it's, it's, it's a habitual yeah, thing. Yeah, it's a, it's a common moment. thing. Yeah, we don't think of it as a common thing. But he does thing. it in the garden. Mm -hmm. We see it the first time, his attack against man, going after the knowledge, trying yes. to get them to doubt what they know. God uh -huh. tells Adam and Eve, you know, don't eat the fruit yes. of the tree. You can have everything else, but this, you, you maintain it, but don't eat it. And Satan comes and questions that and said, did God really say that? Mm -hmm. Trying to get Eve, trying to get them to doubt what they knew to doubt mm -hmm. the knowledge that they knew. And so Satan turns around and he does that again and again. The Bible says Satan goes to and fro Gross. like a roaring oh, lion. lion, like he's not a lion, like a roaring lion, seeking, seeking whom he may devour. devour. So the question is, what is he seeking? Mm -hmm. Because seeking whom he may devour means he can't devour everybody. Mm -hmm. He has to bypass certain people. So the question what is, what is he looking for? What is he looking for? <laughs> well, Hosea says, my people we'll perish, perish for, for lack, lack of, of knowledge. knowledge. So Satan's, his greatest power against you is what you don't know. Yeah. Meaning, if you lack knowledge, that's what mm -hmm. ignorance is. And that's why also the Bible says, study to show yourself. Yes, come on, mama. Yes. So that you can rightly divide the word of truth. Because sometimes we take the word and we don't even use, we don't use the word in the right context yes. for the right situations or circumstances. Yes, yes. And so you got to understand what Satan is mm -hmm. trying to do is trying to get you to doubt the yes. word of God because then you don't have knowledge. Yeah. You don't have knowledge and now you're ignorant. You're mm -hmm. second guessing. And you're like, well, maybe that's not true. Maybe that's not what God mm -hmm. meant. And now he has you. His attack is on your ignorance. Yeah. But in the kingdom, we have to know that God is king of kings. King of He's king, Lord, of, Lord Lords. of Lords. He's the Prince of Peace, yes. the everlasting Father. The and great I am. The great I am. <laughs> and, you know, his... his the bright morning Come star. on, girl. <laughs> and his, his word says, mm -hmm. heaven and earth will pass away. But, but my, my word, word will stand, stand forevermore. forevermore. And so we have to know that that word is true. Because I have hid it in my like heart. Like David. Come on, that girl. I might not sin David said thee. it. Thy word have I hid in my heart <laughs> that I might not sin against yes. thee. And so we got to know that we know that we know. Yes. That God is not a man that he should lie. Yes. His word is true. Yes. So that when the enemy comes, watch, he tries to get you to doubt the word. So you now, you now become mm -hmm. an ignorance and now you're out of alignment. If you're going to be in alignment, you, you have to be operating in the kingdom. And in the kingdom, the word leads the way. Yeah. I have to trust that, know that word, trust that word, stand on that word, yes. even when I don't feel like it, I don't understand. Mm. And when you do, you stay in the kingdom of God, you stay aligned with the kingdom of God, and you back the devil down. Amen. Oh, this is good. So just a lot of other stuff, man, but just kind of an overview. If you missed it, you should go back and look at yes. it. It would be worth you. It if you saw really it, tell somebody. Will. Go look at it. Yes. Go look at go it. Look at well, it. you know what we do? We always now, we want to have some type of video for you that we pop in. And so we want you to take a minute, check out this video. And then what's going to happen, you're going to come out of that. And there are some general questions about kingdom alignment that we've been talking about the last, you know, few weeks as we've launched in the new year. Now, you know our heart. Everybody answer the questions. Everybody get involved. There's no dumb answer. Mm -mm. What you share many times helps somebody else. Yes, it does. So everybody get involved. So after the video, the facilitator will pause the video so the questions will be frozen and everybody answer the questions, man. And then as you go into your passion for today, have a wonderful, wonderful time. Stay connected. Stay informed of what's going on because this year there's so much going on to help you become who God has called you to be. Well, we always say this. You can look high, <laughs> low, up, down, in, out, all around. You'll discover there's victory only one place on the planet. Where is that, mama? In Christ Jesus. She said it with <laughs> voice in her cough. We love you. Be blessed. Be blessed. What would you do tomorrow if you were absolutely certain that the Lord was with you? Like, like what, what courage might that give you to sort of step out from what's comfortable, to know for certain that the Lord is with you? What, what is he calling you to do that you might step into fully if you were sure that he was with you? Look, we love courage, don't we? We love stories of courage. 
We love people who are courageous. We celebrate them. We want to be like them. But if we're honest with ourselves, most of us are anything but courageous, aren't we? We are timid, we are faint-hearted, and we're fearful. A lot of us are afraid that we are not enough, that we don't have what it takes. So, so what kind of fortitude, what kind of grit might arise from a certainty, a confidence that God was with us? None of us in this room, none of us under the sound of my voice want to be known as a coward. God doesn't want you to be a coward. God wants you to be strong and courageous. Webster defines cowardice this way. It's one who shows disgraceful fear or timidity in the face of danger and difficulty. No one wants to be that person. That man, that woman who's a coward, who shrinks back in fear when the difficulty comes. We want to be people who are strong and courageous. We want to be brave and we want to be valiant. But the question is, how? Joshua 1.9, God says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Here is Joshua taking over from Moses. He didn't feel qualified. He didn't feel strong within himself. But here is God trying to give him a pep talk because he has to re lead these millions into the promised land. And God tells him, have I not commanded you? You know how many times God told Joshua to be strong and courageous? Seven times. You know why that God, God had to tell him that? because he was fearful and God had to encourage him to go forth God expects us to be courageous why he says it because I'm with you you can operate in courage why because I am with you and if God be with us who or what can stand against us he tells you today I want to say this to someone I'm speaking to someone in here God is saying to you, have I not commanded you? Have I not told you? Be strong and courageous because the Lord goes with you.